thank a lot of people um, with whom we would not be able to have continued putting out the paper. Shrift is certainly someone who, if it had not been for him, it would not have been a paper the next day. Jay Judge is someone who, without whom there would not have been a paper the next day. Um, I worked with Rob and John and Wendy and Rebecca and Gerald for a long time. Uh, Rob and, and Gerald and I, because we were all at the, at the back end of our career, we would occasionally talk about legacy and what we wanted to leave behind. A lot's been written about Rob and, and being a mentor to young journalists, and a lot has been written about Gerald's quiet intelligence, uh, and a lot has been written about John's love of sports journalism, and Wendy's enthusiasm for the community, and Rebecca's sweet personality. Um, they are all important figures in the history of community journalism, and today's dedication recognizes that and I think they would all be proud of that as part of their legacy. Um, I would ask you all to remember them and remember what they died for, which is they worked in journalism. They were journalists. Um, there's been talk about how community journalism and journalism in general, the business model doesn't work the way it did. And, and, and I believe that the values and the work that we do is important to the community. I believe that community journalism provides a set of common facts and a set of common ideals to discuss. And it's the thing that ties together a community in many ways. It's the underpinning of democracy at the local level. Um, in, in the months after the shooting, did we write 50 stories about the fall election? It sure felt like it some days. Um, you know, we covered uh, opioid <coughs> overdoses. We covered uh, you know, strange crimes. We covered, uh, you know, bigotry uh, uh, in, in some of the candidates who are running. We covered bonding issues. You know, we covered bike lanes in Annapolis, of all things. Um, these are all stories that Rob and Gerald and John and Wendy and Rebecca would have felt a part of. So we've tried to continue their work. And I'd like to thank everybody who was involved in allowing us to do that and those who continue to support us today. I would ask you, if you don't live in our community, you subscribe to your local newspaper. Um, without that, a lot of the things that make a community disappear. So thank you to the University of Maryland, thank you to Karen uh, for all you've done, and thanks for today. Sports Writer Scholarship in John's name. So if you haven't had a chance to take a look at that, I hope you'll Google the John McNamara 1983 Scholarship and see what you can do to make a donation. I, I signed a contract with a publisher for his fourth book just about an hour ago. <laughs> trying to imagine his last moments and get used to trying not to imagine them. But this room tells the story of John's life and his work. His story will be told thanks to that room and thanks to an empty seat by a basketball court and thanks to the fact that the people who knew John and cared about him are writers. I need you writers to tell the stories of all the people who are victimized by gun violence. I need you to get used to not getting used to it. So tell the story of the domestic violence victim who was shot by the last person who told her, I love you. 
tell the story of Mrs. Kim of Silver Spring and her 10-year-old son, Andy, and her 11-year-old daughter who were shot in Silver Spring in August. Tell the story of the child who finds a loaded gun in his parents' home. Tell the story of Ty Flint who shot himself in the head in, Bal in Calthorpe in August. And Amy Hayes who was shot in Baltimore. She's five years old, just a few months after her seven-year-old sister was shot. And tell the story of the despondent veteran at the pit of despair or in some fleeting moments can find a gun so easy to get our hands on. So tell the story of Deanna or Liana of Arnold. Tell the story of Elizabeth Capps who fought her husband for over a decade to get her son the mental health care he needed until his father checked him out of this mental institution after 29 days went and easily bought a gun and drove from Maryland to Florida and shot 12 people. I read in the Washington Post that she worked for the Department of Health and Human Services and I took a chance and looked her up in the directory. There's about 80 buildings she could have been in. She's on the second floor of my building. And now we share a terrible bond of gun violence. Almost 1,000 people in Maryland alone will be victims of gun violence this year. 300 people a day in the United States will be killed by gun violence. Tell their stories. As writers, that's your tool, your skill, and your horrible burden. Make sure we all get used to not getting used to it. Thank you for coming. made even more so by what Time Magazine has chosen to do today of all days. I've told a number of reporters it feels like finally some good karma <coughs> coming our way. Uh, and make no mistake, just to build on what Andrea was saying, this, this really is the scariest season uh, for, for those of us who've lost our family members. It wasn't Halloween. It's now as we face a Christmas and a New Year's without those we are really fearful and just so grateful to have something positive such as this. So thank you. Uh, I am an English teacher, and I do not want to lecture you. Um, <laughs> but I had the pleasure of appearing at a, um, a national vigil for gun violence victims about a week ago, and just made a few points about the irony. Irony is plural. Uh, certainly, the setting in terms of the, the timing of what happened to my husband, Rob, and to those other four beloved journalists. Um, it was my birthday, and that's just a weird thing to live with. Uh, another irony uh, that I noted is that the last thing I said to Rob face-to-face, uh, -face, because it was the summer and I am a teacher and I was getting ready to leave, as I waved goodbye from the garage door, was, be careful, I love you, be careful. Uh, Rob commuted from Timonia, <coughs> which is about an hour on a good day from uh, Annapolis. And our family always thought it would be an aggressive driver <coughs> that would take Rob from us. And it was not an aggressive driver. It was an aggressive individual who had quite a history of aggression, uh, largely on social media. And elsewhere. I'm sure you've read about the letters that were sent the day of. Um, and things don't have to stay that way. Uh, you know, the irony of no one being terribly surprised that this was the individual responsible or charged, I should say. Um, they don't have to stay that way because Maryland does in fact have an extreme risk law, red flag law, if you prefer. Uh, it took effect in October of this year. <coughs> hard not to imagine if only it had taken effect sooner. So I would like to say to all of you, uh, please remember that you do have the right, and I would argue the civic duty, if you observe someone who is erratically violent and threatening uh, 
verbally, social media, wherever. Uh, you can make note of that, whether you're a loved one, a medical professional, or a member of law enforcement. There is a law in place that permits you to file documentation and see to it that those people do not have guns in their hands. So I just urge you all to do that. Um, can't leave without talking a little bit about Rob, so on a lighter note, let me just say, Rob would be completing, if he were still here, uh, his second stint at being a, an adjunct professor, teaching what I call reporting and writing 101. <coughs> that he's not here, but if you could enter our home there in Timonium, there you'd see on his desk the stack of files he was planning last summer. Um, quizzes, exclamation mark, on top of one. <laughs> Syllabus, exclamation mark, on another. Along with some recommended writers he thought everybody should read. Everybody <coughs> needs to be reported. Joan Didion was one of them. Hunter S. Thompson and Tom Easy Coates. So uh, he did he did love the craft of journalism and the craft of writing, and I know he would be damn proud and honored. Thank you, University of Maryland School of Journalism, for dedicating this lecture hall in honor of my husband, uh, Gerald Kishman, and among other members, and, and his esteemed colleagues. Uh, his parents wanted him to be a lawyer but he had followed his childhood dream and had chosen to be a journalist. And that was 42 years of his life until his last breath taken. He had dedicated his whole life and talent in journalism. He stayed loyal and uh, persistent and uh, followed his passion and his childhood dream to be a writer, to be the vo voice of the who cannot speak for themselves. And his voice was valued and well served in the community. <coughs> my, dad, my dad was so loving, kind and caring person. I remember he was so proud of his, his school, the School of Journalism. He would donate and contribute to this, you know, the, the school in his own way. And uh, one day, my parents and I were walking around back then on campus, all around. He was explaining this building and that building, that statue, everything. And I remember so clear, he told me, he hinted at me, saying, it would be so great to have my daughter to actually go to the same school and leave my legacy. And so I did. I went to uh, Robert H. Smith Business School. <laughs> <laughs> I changed it in most likely. <laughs> um, so from the very beginning till graduation, he encouraged me and supported me in every single way he could. And he always tells me, you cut, dream big, and the sky is the limit. So he's the reason of every success in my life and my career to this day. And so I'm proud of being the alumni of the same school, and I hope young generation, like myself, like other students here in this room, will hold on to their wisdom and remember, dream big, and sky's the limit. And thank you so much.